In this video, we're going to go through the new addition to Mythic Plus in the next patch, Dawn of the Infinite, Galakron's Fall. Through this video, you'll learn the mechanics of each mob and how the bosses work, allowing you to feel confident when you try it out for the first time. As we enter the dungeon, we're first met with a big omnic door with beautiful yellow-brown sparkling sand underneath it. As appealing as the sand looks, try your best to dodge it because it deals a huge amount of damage if you're not careful. In fact, it can even trigger the augmentation's cheat death effect with just a single hit. After the doors open, you are then met with your first pack of mobs who instantly charge the group. It's best to let your tank go through the door first, or you risk pulling aggro. This pack consists of three mobs that you will frequently encounter throughout the first segment of the dungeon, two infinite time slicers and a chrono weaver. Shele also pulls the third type of mob that appears frequently before the first boss, the epic ripper. Do know that this may not be the best strategy in lower difficulty levels when the patch hits. Anyway, the scariest mob in the first segment of the dungeon is said Epic Ripper, which teleports onto random players and performs a high damage blade storm with its time rip ability. When facing this mob, make sure your group is spreading out to avoid cleaving anyone down when it teleports. Also, try to hold onto a movement speed increase or defensive ability for when it comes your way. The second scariest mob is the Infinite Chrono Weaver, which casts the channel of Chrono Melt. This ability deals high damage and reduces players' haste and movement speed by 50%. It's a high priority cast to interrupt, so make sure you have this mob on focus. Finally, we have the Infinite Time Slicer, who casts Tempo Slice, an unkickable channeled ability that causes your tank to take increased damage over time. Although this ability cannot be interrupted, you can crowd control the mob, so make sure you're close enough to it that so you can coordinate crowd control with the rest of your party. After dealing with the second pack of Epic Rippers, Chrono Weavers, and Time Slicers, it's time for our first boss of the dungeon, Chronicar. Chronicar is a relatively straightforward first boss that involves soaking mechanics, placing swirlies, and watching his energy bar for his major ability, Eon Shatter. As soon as Chronicar is pulled, you'll need to be somewhat spaced out from your team and try to tank the boss near a corner. This is due to the Sand Stomp ability, which you'll want to place close to one another on one side of the room to conserve as much space as possible. Sand Stomp will deal scaling damage the longer you're in it while snaring you and reducing your haste by 25%, so you should do your best to avoid this at all costs. Following this, Chronicar will reach 100 energy and jump up in the air, landing with an ability called Aeon Shatter on two random players, creating two large circles that you must avoid. After dodging the two circles, you'll then want to dodge the Eon Fragments that radiate out in a circle from Kronikar. As always, being further away from Kronikar will make it easier to dodge these projectiles as they will be more telegraphed. As soon as the Eon Fragments are sent out, a small puddle will appear close to the boss that you must soak or risk wiping. This is Eon Residue, and if it's not soaked, it will transform into a Residue Blast and potentially wipe your whole party. This phase happens twice in a row, so you need to make sure you don't move too far away as you'll need to be ready to soak. After this, the fight repeats. We go back to placing the Sand Stomp AoEs close to other ones from earlier, until Kronikar reaches 100 energy again, at which point he will cast Eon Shatter and cycle back again. When it comes to tank and healer specific mechanics, watch out for Chrono Shear. By using active damage mitigation before it goes through and focus healing the tank while it's up. Failure to do this will result in being unable to dispel sheared lifespan, causing them to take 200% increased damage while the debuff is active. After defeating Chronicar, we'll proceed through another door and enter the manifested Timeways trash room. In this area, we'll encounter five different types of mobs, most of which are quite deadly. Coalesce Time, Temporal Fusion, Coalesce Moments, Timestream Leeches, and Timestream Anomalies. Among these mobs, the one you should be most concerned about is the Timestream Anomaly, which casts Bloom. This ability is applied to the tank and is then duplicated onto another player. Any damage the tank takes is also dealt to the linked player. To deal with Bloom, make sure to dispel it as soon as possible and have your tank use damage mitigation, as it will also reduce the damage taken by the linked player. The Anomaly will also perform a frontal called Untwist, which usually targets the tank and deals splash damage upon impact, so ensure you're not stacking too close to them. Coming in at number 2, we have Coalesce Time, which casts Chronoburst, 
another dispellable debuff that targets two random players and explodes when dispelled. This explosion, when placed on phased out mobs, will activate small adds called intervals, which also explode upon death. So make sure you don't position yourself near them when you have this debuff. Coalesce Time will also cast Infinite Bolt Volley, which must be kicked at all costs to avoid Annihilation. Coalesce Moments come in at a number 3 on the Fear Factor list due to its ability Tainted Sand, which we think might be a bit overtuned currently. Boasting a 1 second cast time for damage over time effect that ticks for over 130k, this mob needs to be quickly kicked or crowd controlled as soon as possible, as you'll want that dispel for other mechanics. Coalesce Moments also cast Infinite Bolt, which doesn't do too much damage, so don't worry too much about this cast going through. Timestream Leech is also a very scary mob that you should look out for due to its high damage ability, Enervate. Enervate starts as an interruptible cast and then turns into an uninterruptible channel, which is left alone will kill its target. To deal with this mob, ensure you kick the cast or crowd control the channel. Finally, we have Temporal Fusion, which is a tank buster add. This mob casts a simple attack called Triple Strike, which does exactly as its name suggests. It strikes three times. This mechanic can be interrupted, but it's not a high priority. Instead, allow your tank to use defensives if needed. After you've cleared through all these mobs, you'll reach the next boss, Manifested Timeways. Throughout this fight, the floor will be split into four large rotating triangles, both dealing ticking damage to you. The two darker triangles will give you the Decaying Time debuff, which deals damage to you every 3 seconds, but will also give you a 20% damage reduction, whereas the lighter one, Accelerating Time, will make you take damage every 1 second while granting you 30% movement speed. These slices are significant as they will help you deal with the boss's two mechanics. The first mechanic is Fragment of Time, which will hurl damaging orbs out from the boss that you must avoid. These balls move faster in the Accelerated Zone and slower in the Decaying Zone. To best deal with this mechanic, you should position yourself on a line between the fast and slow zone so you can weave in and out as the balls appear. The next mechanic is Chrono Faded, which will put a debuff on two random players that deals damage over time. When this happens, one player must make their way to the accelerated time zone, the lighter one, to be dispelled, while the other person with a debuff waits in the decaying time zone until the debuff is about to expire and then moves to the accelerated zone as it dissipates. It's important the debuff is dispelled or expires in the light zone as the damage will occur in a quick flash, making it easier to heal rather than hitting multiple times from a slow wave if it were to be dispelled in the dark zone. It's also very important that the player not being dispelled stays in the dark zone for the damage reduction until the final moment as the debuff hits very hard. As for tanks, Unwind is not currently on the PTR version of the dungeon, so the only mechanic to take care of is Radiant, which will wipe the group if you are not in melee range of the boss at all times. Next up, we have a fun little roleplay event before we take on the miniboss, the Infinite Infiltrator. Who doesn't love these in Mythic Plus? The miniboss will begin with a Timeless Curse cast, which spawns swirlies on the ground. Avoid these at all costs, as they will deal heavy damage and stun you. After the curse, the Infiltrator will unleash a massive AoE damage ability called Infinite Fury, which fortunately doesn't have an infinite duration. This ability is both unkickable and cannot be crowd controlled, so prepare to trade your defensives here. It will then repeat the cycle of Timeless Curse and Infinite Fury until it is killed. After you've dealt with the Infinite Infiltrator, there's a pleasant gauntlet with a few swirlies you should probably avoid, followed by a relaxing dragon ride, and to top it off, a portal to your next destination. Seems slightly overkill, but who are we to judge? In this new frosty area, we'll fight two new types of mobs, Blight Chunks and Risen Dragons. Although Blight Chunks lack initial damage when killed, they will buff nearby mobs with increased attack speed through Relentless Hunger, so be careful not to pull too many at once. As for Risen Dragons, they pulse every 2 seconds, dealing heavy nature damage with Necrotic Outburst and scatter Swirlies on the floor from Blight's view. These Swirlies can stun and pack quite a punch, so it's best to avoid them as much as possible. Since these dragons deal significant damage, we recommend not pulling more than 2 at a time. 
or you risk using all of your defensives and putting a lot of stress on your healer. After dealing with all the dragons and blights, it's time to face the next boss, Blight of Galakrond. Unlike the first two bosses, the Blight of Galakrond has three phases that change based on the boss's health percentage. In the first phase, you'll be up against a big blob. This boss starts by shooting out green swirlies from its corrosive infusion ability, which you should dodge. Additionally, it leaves a trail of goo every time it moves, so tanks should aim to keep it fairly stationary. As well as shooting slime, he'll also give a debuff to a player called Corrosion, which you can see as a ball above the player's head. This debuff deals quite a bit of damage, so healers need to be aware of the party member affected and spot heal them through its duration. The affected player then has 15 seconds to transfer the ball to the tank by running on top of them. After the ball has been passed, the tank will then soak the Blight Reclamation Frontal to remove the Corrosion debuff. It's important that this is done within 15 seconds of the debuff being active, or the player still holding the ball becomes mind-controlled. After this is completed, the sequence will continue until the blob reaches 80% health, at which point it will enter Phase 2 by transforming into Anzan, a creature that's half bird, half dragon. It will continue with the same mechanics as the blob, with the addition of its new mechanics, Necrotic Winds. These are a circle of tornadoes that spawn from the boss, dealing a knockback and hitting pretty hard. Make sure to dodge them by moving between the gaps where they spawn. While doing this, Anzan will also pulse out AoE damage, so be sure to have healing cooldowns or defensives ready for it. Once again, these mechanics will repeat until the boss reaches 50% HP, at which point it will split into two and enter its final phase. In phase three, the boss is now known as Laws Karaleth and Dazok, and they share a health pool. Because of this, stacking them up is a great idea to kill them faster. As for mechanics, Los Karaleth inherits abilities from the previous phases, including the Corrosion Transfer, and now adds Necrofrost to the mix. Necrofrost targets a random player, immobilizing them and dealing significant damage. To counter this, ensure that the Necrofrosted player walks into melee range so they can be cleaved down by the rest of the party. Dazok, on the other hand, will aimlessly walk around the room, casting Incinerating Blight Breath a high damage channeled frontal, as well as a single target ability called Noxious Ejection on random players. So don't leave any party members at low health or they may be killed unexpectedly. Due to Zazok's frontals being unpredictable, it's especially important to watch your surroundings as you never know where that bird is going to end up casting from. Now with Galakron defeated, it's time to move on to the last trash packs of the dungeon. which mainly consist of mobs we've already encountered at the start. Epic Rippers, Time Slicers, and Chrono Weavers, along with a new addition, Eridicron's Creation. This new mob has a high priority for interrupts as you must lock out its Stone Bolt ability. Failing to interrupt it will result in a stacking bleed debuff that hits incredibly hard, although it can be removed with abilities like Cauterizing Flame and Stone Form. Once you've fought through several mixed packs of these mobs, you will arrive at the final boss, Eridicron the Stone Scaled. This boss fight is all about keeping yourself and Chromie alive, so healers have to make sure she's above 75% HP before every Stonecracker barrage or you will wipe. When the fight starts, one player will be given a huge circle debuff called Extinction Blast. This player will then need to make their way over to Chromie and stand in her dome to reduce damage taken by 97%. Failure to do so will result in you dying instantly. The tank will also be receiving the debuff Crushing Onslaught from taking melee attacks, which will need to be reset as often as possible since it will stack and can overwhelm you if you're not careful. Following this, the boss will then cast Stonecracker Barrage, doing huge damage to Chromie and spawning two circles on the floor. Make sure your tank is soaking the smaller one close to the boss and all four other members soak the larger one in the back. While you're soaking, the Stonecracker Barrage will also deal three huge ticks of damage, so be ready to use large defensives here. Once the cast is finished, Chromie will give everyone 50% haste for 25 seconds, so make sure you have offensives still up for this. After you have a few minutes to breathe, the boss will then shield itself and start casting Earth Surge, shooting out deadly spikes from the floor and leaving damage pools on the ground. The only way to stop this mechanic is to break the shield, so make sure your offensives are still rolling. Fortunately, the swirlies left behind don't stay permanently though, so you can dodge them for as long as you need to phase the boss.
Once the shield is dealt with, Aridicron will deal a huge frontal and place two circles on two players that spawn pulverizing creations. These mobs cast the Stonebolt ability we saw earlier in the dungeon and must be kicked as each cast deals massive pressure. These phases then repeat until Aridicron is at 90% health, where you should look to pre-position so you're ready to get into Chromie's damage mitigation bubble once the new phase starts. In the next final phase, you're going to be burning through Aridicron's energy bar, which is equal to 5% of his total health in a race against the clock. If you don't kill it in 30 seconds, you'll be wiping. Fortunately, in this phase, you have assistance as Chromie will be giving you timeline transcendence, increasing your damage, haste, resource, and cooldown regeneration by 100% throughout the entire fight. So make sure you stay in Chromie's bubble or you'll be missing out. And just like that, you've completed Dawn of the Infinite, Galacron's Fall. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a follow-up to this guide on the second Dawn of the Infinite dungeon, Murazon's Rise. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.